There's a new king in town for image editing. It's faster and way more controllable than ChatGPT. Some people are already saying that it's close to replacing Photoshop. In this video, I'm going to run through a bunch of quick real world tests, and then I'm really going to push it to the limit with some hard edge case uses that most people haven't even tried. Um, I'll also teach you the exact image prompt formula that I use, um, that you can use in any image generator and get way better results. If you're a designer or a marketer, or you just like playing with images, stick around. So first I tried Nano Banana in Google Gemini. Just go to gemini.google.com. I asked it to recreate this image from the left side view and it just kind of zoomed out. So I decided to test it a little bit more and it did a fantastic job of doing that. And then I, and then I wanted to try an image of myself, just giving myself long red hair and bam. <laughs> Great job on that. Then I got it to stretch my arms out and put me in a red hoodie. It kind of distorted my face there. So I guess it didn't have enough information about the sides of my face. But in general, it's much better than ChatGPT at preserving faces. I also asked it to generate an image of an hourglass in this style of icon that I use for my brand, which is kind of a claymation look. I don't think it did a great job at that. It was okay, but it's a little bit too realistic for my liking. So next up, let's try out some real world prompts, including some really difficult edge cases that most image generators have really struggled with. So first I have this image here of some croc type shoes that uses some of my characters. There's a licensee that has manufactured these shoes. This is just a simple iPhone photo. So I want to see if I can make this look like a real product shot. So let's copy this photo. And now we're going to go into Google AI studio and try it here as well. So this is just AI studio.google.com and we can just click on native generation image we'll paste our image here and then say make this a studio product shot and click run one thing about nano banana is it is way faster than using the chat gpt or sora image model this will happen just in seconds for the rest of this video i'm going to speed everything up but bam that's live how quickly we got it. And that's actually pretty high resolution as well. It's captured the details perfectly. Fantastic. 10 out of 10. Let's say we wanted to put this into a more interesting setting that would really bring out the aesthetics. For that, I'm going to use my own prompt formula that I'm going to give away to you at the end of this video. So I've pasted my original image here into ChatGPT. This is a shoe that has some of my artwork and some of my characters on it. You already know about my Fluberverse character world. Think of a really cool way that we could change this image into um, something that would really bring out the storytelling of the Fluberverse. I like to just talk to ChatGPT and spit out whatever I have in my mind. I'm just going to add one other thing. Write an image generation prompt in the style that I like. Now, ChatGPT already knows the image prompting formula that I like to use to get really detailed image prompts. So it's going to write this prompt for me following my structure, and then we're going to use that and plug it into Nano Banana. We've got subject, composition and layout, lighting, background, mood and vibe, style and art direction, purpose and context. I'm not gonna read through all of this right now. Let's just copy that prompt. We'll go back to 
Google Image Studio. We'll paste in our prompt here. We'll copy this original image again and paste it in. And we'll see what Nano Banana can do for us al along with this highly detailed prompt that um, ChatGPT has given us. Oh, that's pretty cool. It's tried to recreate my character Flu. I love the little sparkles and things that it's added around. This is just using ChatGPT's imagination and I'm surprised that it actually managed to get a character that looks something like Flu somewhat right. So, yeah. Product imagery, 10 out of 10. Okay, now we're really gonna stretch it to the max. I've got an image of a cushion with all of my characters on it. We've got a model and a kind of fantasy background with the a kind of AI rendering of the world that these characters live in with my main character, Flub, in the front. I've plugged all of those into Google AI Studio with the shoes and said, create an image of the woman wearing the shoes, holding the cushion with the character graphics. She's standing in a fantasy colorful world where everything is dripping with paint. Let's see if this works. All of these images are like totally different dimensions. So I don't know what dimensions it's going to output. I don't know if it's going to keep the main character in that background image there. Let's just see what happens. This is really giving it a lot of input and pretty vague instructions. Not as good as the instructions that we gave before. Oh my God. It's done a pretty damn good job. Her face looks perfect. She's holding the pillow. That's the correct shape. We can't see her feet. Oh, we can. Oh my God. That's incredible. They haven't quite got the designs on the shoes, right? But that's all right. And it's totally reinterpreted the background. Not exactly what I asked for, but pretty incredible. Okay, next up, we've got this random photo that I took with my iPhone. It's for the New Zealand ball, which I'm helping to do in Thailand this year. The photo is like, you can see the shadow of the iPhone. It's got my hand there. Like, it's just a quick pic that I wanted to take. Also, it's worth noting that it's got the New Zealand national anthem in both English and Maori, which is our second language in New Zealand. So I want to see if we can clean this up. Remove the shadow overlaying the paper and blur the background behind it. Improve the lighting so it looks like studio shot photo. Let's see how well it can actually preserve the text of both of those languages as well. Oh, no change at all. It failed on that one. We're going to have to try a different prompt. Okay. So I just said, show this, show the paper in this photo with the English and Maori New Zealand national anthems lying flat on a table. It should look like a studio shot photo and it did a perfect job of recreating the photo. That said, it's given us a vertical image, just like the original. What I want to see is put it into a 16 by nine image. Let's see if it can actually change aspect ratios. ChatGPT has really no problem with this at all. I don't know if Google has put that level of control into it yet. It looks like this image will generally go with the proportions of the original image that you feed it. So bear in mind, this is more of an image editor than an image creator. That said, let's test out its image creation abilities. Okay, now we're gonna go head to head. Google versus ChatGPT. So I've given it a prompt using my prompt structure to generate a perfume bottle in a nice environment. We're just gonna let it run. We're going to generate it in landscape and click run. We're gonna do exactly the same thing in Sora and let it run. Sora is gonna be way slower. I'll get back to you when Sora has finished doing its thing. Okay, so these are the images that Sora generated. Really nice studio level images with a generic perfume label. Google Studio was a little bit more creative actually. It was quite good. However, it only made it in square, even though I told it twice to generate it in three by two. For image generation, 
Google does a pretty good job. But in general, I think that Sora is the stronger image generator. Next up, we're going to try a real challenge for it. Okay, now this I have never managed to get right in any image generator. I've even trained image models on this character from multiple images and views and they cannot repose this character and get all the lines right and all of his weird features right. So we are going to say to Google, attached is a character turnaround sheet showing a teal one-eyed character from four different views. He has rounded bulbous hands, short rounded legs, a curly tail, and a curl on top of his head. Create an image of this character dancing. Now I've given it all this detail to explain what's in the image. So let's see what it can do. Okay, so it's kind of done it. It didn't get the eye, like the C-shaped iris quite right. It's given him hands, like fingers that he doesn't have. It's added feet, which he also doesn't have, but it's done an okay job. For comparison, let's see what Sora does. About the same, even more with the fingers. Still cannot find an image generator that can handle Flug. So one of the reasons why this model is so good is because it has a better world understanding than any other model. It understands the meanings of the things in your image. It understands proportions. It understands orientations and things like that better than any other model. That said, I want to give it a real challenging test. And that is replacing a logo or a label on an image where it's not just straight on. So let's give it a try. Okay, so I've got this bag of nuts that I found on the internet. You can barely see the label. I've also got a design that I did for a friend of mine called Dusty, and it's called Dusty's Nuts. I asked it to replace the label on the bag with the Dusty's Nuts label. And what it first did was it put it on the side of the bag. I said, okay, replace the text on the top of the bag with the Dusty's Nuts label. Don't put anything on the side of the bag. And this is what happened. It got it right, but it got the logo upside down. So it didn't understand the top of the bag from the bottom of the bag. Because it's lying on its sides, I'll forgive it. Still, in general... It's got great world knowledge. So I created this ChatGPT5 prompting guide and I've just updated it now to include that full prompt structure for generating images. And it's right here. It's called the ultimate image prompt. So you can just copy this prompt, paste it into ChatGPT and say, remember this structure for when I want to create an image. And then that's going to put it into ChatGPT's memory. And it's always going to follow this whenever you generate an image using any image generator. There's a bunch of other stuff in here that I think that you'll find useful. Things like creating ads, website copy, email outreach, LinkedIn posts, marketing research, all that kind of stuff. And the beauty of it is that you don't even need to read this whole thing. You can just attach this guide and then copy this prompt right here. And then ChatGPT is going to take the information from this guide and use it to improve its own thinking. And you can also use it to fix your prompts as well. A really useful prompt that I use sometimes is deep thinking mode. So this is telling ChatGPT to really put as much thought into any given task that you like. The link to this is down in the description below, and I hope you find it useful. Okay, so here's the verdict. Nano Banana is super fast, even faster than Mid Journey. Its resolution is quite impressive, even higher than ChatGPT's. The main thing is the control, which is a step change above anything before. ChatGPT used to be the best, but now we've got like a new level of control for image editing. 
as an image editor, Nano Banana is now eas easily number one. It's not great at resizing images and it can't do like new dimensions. So that makes it more useful as an image generator than for resizing. It's really good with faces and it doesn't mess with color like ChatGPT does quite often. It's fantastic at details, but ChatGPT is still better for text. It's fine for like small amounts of copy, I think. But for larger volumes of text, like infographics, I'd still go for ChatGPT. In terms of stylization, Midjourney is still the best, followed by ChatGPT and then Nano Banana. So I want to create a kind of continuum here. At the top, you've got image to image, which is basically control. And at the bottom, you've got text to image which is basically style so image to image nano banana is best text to image mid journey is best chat gpt sits somewhere in between them and i think flux if you've heard about that is a little bit above chat gpt now i haven't tested stylization in this video very much like doing anime or painterly styles or whatever I've just been focusing on photo edits, which are especially useful for designers and marketers. A quick reminder, you can get my ChatGPT5 prompting guide in the link below, and it will generally improve your ChatGPT performance. And it's got that image generation structure that you can use for any model. Thanks for watching, and uh, see you in the next one. Cheers.